Hello everyone and welcome to Gen Con 50. I'm here with Steven and Alex Davey. Alex is the designer of the recently announced by Fantasy Flight Games, Star Wars Legion, a new Star Wars miniature war game. Tell me about it. Well, there's, there's a lot to tell. I'm really excited to, to be here to be showing this off. It's been a lot of work, but uh, as you can see, it looks gorgeous. It does indeed. Uh, it's really the first time Fantasy Flight has made an entry into the sort of full-scale, tabletop, miniature war game like, category. Uh, as you can see, it's designed to be played on custom-built terrain, the kind of stuff you might find at your friendly local gaming store. Uh, it's designed to be large-scale. The full-size game would actually be two of these type tables. So like a six end. by three? Yeah, six by three. And um, the, the attraction, I think, to that is that you get these really highly detailed, finely sculpted Star Wars figures, and the movement is free form. So it's a very immersive uh, experience. So it's just really exciting to see all the stuff on the table, painted up. This is the kind of stuff where you walk by a game store and you see people playing something like this and you're just immediately intrigued by it. It's, it's, that was sort of what happened to me way back in the day when I was in my you know, teens. I like, saw some people playing, I think it was 40K or it might have been like Warzone or Cronopia on this kind of custom train. I was just like, what is that? What is happening here? And the fact that we get to play in the Star Wars universe is just a dream come true. I mean, like, how can you beat that? But you've got Vader on the table, you've got Luke Skywalker. I have a question. Yeah, do, I have to, me. do I have to put these models together and, and glue my fingers in the process? You do, although what I will say is that this is a, a much more approachable form of model than what you might say see on a plastic sprue with a bunch of little pieces. There's very little, there's, there's not a lot of cutting. Um, it's very similar to the Rune Wars line, where there, there's very easy to plug in parts. Uh, it should be simple uh, for almost anybody to put together. Nice. So we've tried to make it really accessible, really approachable, but not lose any quality. As you can see, there's a ton of detail on these figures. Absolutely. They're big, they're bold. Uh, we're super, super happy with what the sculpting department's been able to put together. So I have a question. Yeah. How do you play? Good question. I'm glad you asked. <laughs> uh, so this is a game of tactical, fast-paced uh, combat. So this is, you're in the war, you're in the fight. Um, and the, the key linchpin to this whole system is that you will have a, a commander in charge of your forces. In your case, it's Darth Vader. In your case, it's Luke Skywalker. And uh, the way that each turn is structured is the commander will issue orders to friendly units in order to direct the flow of battle and determine who goes first. It's alternate activation. Um, it's, it's nice and back and forth. Uh, in this particular scenario, the, the goal is just to destroy the enemy. You'll each get one victory point for each full unit that is eliminated. Uh, full unit would be this entire group of rebel troopers, Luke Skywalker, that AT-RT over there, the speeder bikes, that kind of thing. Uh, in the, in the uh, core game, the core experience is much more objective-based, much more about capturing points, relaying information, sort of very, very Star Wars-y, mission-oriented stuff. But to keep things nice and simple for you, just blast them. So, in, yeah, in the core <laughs> game, you can just blast them. Yes, But you absolutely. can also, like, steal the plants of the Death Star, transmit yeah. them, everyone dies, but you still win. Exactly, yep. That's, yeah. that's it's the, Star think, Wars. Exactly, and that's a big key thing with this. Like, uh, games are not won based on points destroyed. They're not won based on, you know, you eliminating the enemy because in Star Wars, it's much more important for the overall goal of the Galactic Civil War, per se, to, uh, to be achieved. So Rogue One's a perfect example of that. The, the entire company is lost, but they achieve their objectives, so it's a victory. Sure. Uh, and that's kind of what we're trying to capture here. So if you want to pick up your, your hand of command cards here. OK, so we each have a hand the really, of command cards. The really simple ones. Yeah. Um, and you'll notice that these, these, uh, these pips in the upper left-hand corner. OK. Uh, at the start of the command phase, each of you will play one of those cards, and the card with the fewest number of pips means you get to give out orders first and activate first. Once a card is played, it's done. It's, it's, it's over, it can't be played again, except for the standing orders card, which returns to your hand. So it's important to sort of pace yourself as you're playing, because once you use a card, it's gone. So if you play all your fast cards right away, your opponent will know that you have none left. So if I play a card with one pip, yes. and he play, if Steven plays a card with two pips, that means you, I get to go first. That's correct. Yep. You would, you, would, you would go first, and the way that it's structured is, generally speaking, 
the, the faster your car, the, the, the higher its priority, the fewer units you'll be able to give orders to. I see, it shows one unit, two yep. units, three units. Exactly, units. and these are the basics. Each commander also has their own unique command mm -hmm. cards, which I'll show you after the game. Yeah. Uh, but that's a key element of the system because uh, activation is not a certainty, it's, it's random. So after you've played a card, so we'll, I'll, just, I'll just pick one for you this time. Okay. So we'll have you play that, and we'll have you play that Ooh, I'm gonna get for you. the first round. So once both players have selected a card and played them face down, they're revealed simultaneously. So what we have here is we have the push card, which is two units, and we have the standing orders card, which is one. So you have the highest priority card, so you would give your orders out first. Now when you issue an order, you have these order tokens here. Okay. If you want to gather those up. All right. Those correspond to the rank of the unit. And you can see the rank on the unit card. So that triangle, that's a core unit. So okay. the, the most common so unit. The triangle is a triangle unit. Yep. Uh, and that's a four. Yep, and the, that's the number of troopers in the unit. Okay, so four strong troopers. It's got a triangle, which we have a triangle token that matches. Yep, and then you also have an upgrade card. This unit's been upgraded with an additional D DLT-19 Stormtrooper, which is why you have five figures on the table. All right. But you can see the, the pretty classic Fantasy Flight Games upgrade bar style, uh, plug yeah, and play. Yeah, matching the icons yep, and all that just stuff. like X-Wing, just like Armada. And it has a point cost, right? It costs, yep. it costs half as much as the Stormtroopers. Yeah. Yeah, a, he's see, got a big gun. Because you get an extra guy. Which guy is that? Yep, so this is this guy. So he's the, right, he's got the big DLT-19. He's got long range. He's got better dice. In, impact one. So yep. while attacking a unit that, the, that has armor, change one of your hit results to a crit result. I, yep. I assume that's what those are. That's exactly right. Nailed it. You've played some games before. I, I, I have played a game or two <laughs> in my life. Okay, very They've cool. got a defense value. We'll get into all of that detail yeah, later. Yeah. Uh, but basically, once you've given out your orders, and I'll just I'll do something to make it to, to show you sort of the, the mechanics of the system. So the the way to give an order is command range is range one to three. Okay. So anything within that of Darth this, Vader. This is the range ruler. Which should be just about everybody. So I can measure from Vader, I can get to yep. over here, which is everybody. So he's in prime position to command the whole army. So what he's gonna do is he's gonna game the system a little bit. He's gonna give himself an order and he's gonna give these speeder bikes an order. Okay. And then the rest of the orders are randomized. So you can see that you now have full control over your army this turn. Yeah, because the rest of mine are my stormtroopers. Right, so you know that you can either activate your bikes, a random unit, which is stormtroopers, or Darth Vader. Steven, nice. on the other hand, only has one order to issue. Uh, and so he, can, he has to choose. He's not gonna necessarily have this, the, the same dependable uh, action Economy. He's yeah. not going to necessarily be able to rely on doing what he wants to do when he wants to do it. But I might luck into it. You is, might. Is what you're saying. You absolutely might. So Very you cool. you will choose one of these orders to issue face up to one of these troopers. Which one do you like? So there's Luke, a lot of moving here, which I kind of like. These guys. Do yeah, they, this would not be a bad choice. Luke's the ATRT choice. would not be a bad choice. Let's uh, let's move these. This seems good. Okay. So that would be the triangle symbol for a core unit, and then you would take the rest of these, and you would. Randomize them, randomize them and put them in a command stack or in a bag or any kind of thing like that. So we'll just put these right here for you. Uh, this card goes back into your hand, so you can use it again. This card is expended. It's gone. And it's gone. It's out of here. And so if, if something hadn't been at range three of Vader, if it had been outside of his range. They could not be issued an order. So they just don't get an order this round. Yep. So and when the game is is bigger, the positioning of your commander is really key. Sure. Because you, and there, there are upgrades, of course, that allow you to do like long range communications and that kind sure. of thing. But like if it was, if Aura is a six foot table, yep. and Vader's here, I don't get a command this side of my army. That's correct. You not can't without, get out ahead of yourself. Not without some special upgrade cards. Sure. Yeah, he has not a card called Battle that. Meditation, which lets him do one anywhere on the table like and a, that kind of stuff. Like, so, a, like, a, like, a, like a dang force user. Like a, like, a, <laughs> like a dad. All right. Absolutely. So, so what happens next? Yeah, so because you played the card with the fewest pips, you get to activate a unit first. Okay. So each unit in the game, when it activates, can perform two actions, All right. plus any number of free actions. Uh, various card effects will allow you to play free actions. In this game, Darth Vader, after he performs a movement action, uh, he can perform a free attack action. So he gets a move, and then he gets a free attack. Exactly. Yep. And he is equipped with something called Saber Throw. I which see that. allows him to throw his lightsaber and make a ranged attack. Normally, he's restricted to melee only. Whew. So, um, essentially, 
It's time to activate. It's time to activate. Let's let's just All have right. some let's have some fun. I think I feel like I want to move these guys. Yeah, that's a good call because so you would you knowing what is in your command stack, you would say, "All right, oh, I'm yeah, going right, to reveal right. the top of the stack." And I get Look a random one. Oh, what do you know? It's, it's a stormtrooper storm dial. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, how do I what do I do here? That's a great question. So, movement is uh, these speed lines here. Okay. So, and those as you can see, they correspond to the number of lines on these movement tools. Okay. Nice and simple. So, you want to grab the two over there. All right. Now you can use either the two template or any lower template, yes. which in this case is just the one. Okay, so I'm gonna so, use the two because I yeah. wanna get in there. Yeah, so I, uh, one of the things to, to note is that cover in this game is very important. It's how you protect yourself from getting blasted. Uh, it, it's a pretty strong mechanic to have your guys actually behind barricades. Uh, these trees will provide light cover that will cancel one hit when you're being attacked. These barricades will provide heavy cover, which will cancel two hits. Okay. So in order to get cover, you just have to make sure that at least half of your squad, if they're being shot by the enemy squad, is behind that cover. So if you were to move into position, you would want three of your guys to be behind this barricade, for example. Okay. And the way movement works is like this. Do you place this tool it, in terms of troopers, it's anywhere adjacent to the base. When it comes to vehicles, it goes into this little notch. Okay. So troopers have more free movement. Yeah. And vehicles are a bit restricted. Yeah, because they have to go in turn. Yep. And in fact, these have a compulsory move because they have to keep going. Yeah. So we'll get into that in a minute. But if you want to just move up and take cover behind this barricade, which is just a pretty strong option, uh, you would spend your first action. And now I see my commander. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so every unit has a unit leader. And this is a way that we've managed to, to really simplify the fiddliness of movement, miniature game movement that. system. Because, yeah, all you have to do is move your unit leader, and he can move along this template and stop at any time. Okay. Or he can make a full move from, from end to end. Okay, we'll do that. So once that's done, you just place the rest of the squad in cohesion. Okay. And cohesion is just that little movement template. They just have to be within that at, at this range. So it can so, be that far away. Yep, just touching, basically touching this ruler. All right. Now, if you wanted to move again, which if you wanted to take cover behind here, you don't even have to worry about these guys until you reach your final position. Very nice. So you could spend your second action. We measured here, you got okay, plenty so I of range. I spent one action to move. Yep. And then I can spend a second action to move again. That's correct. All right, so let's do that. So you'll move up here. And now you can place your guys in cohesion. All right, let's so do it. So they can, they can just go. This. There you go. And this, because I like. Very nice. Ah, <laughs> I like killing troopers. I'm already apparently. wrecking my model, Zach. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so sorry. Uh, and then, put it in. They, they can be anywhere within this, right? Yeah, so it could, could be, be behind here. It could be, be over the barricade if I wanted. Yep, to. they could be over the barricade. Now, now you've already got cover because most of your unit is behind that barricade. So, so it, you could place them a little closer. Combat range is measured from unit leaders. So there's no Very real cool. advantage to having your troopers further ahead than this your unit cool. leader. It looks cool. And right, cool. let's do this. There's something to be said for that. Cool. I'm a, yeah, I absolutely. mean, look at this game. I'm about looking cool here. Looking cool this is pretty like much. peeking, you know, absolutely. at Steven's squad what over there. What could go wrong? <laughs> and then we'll, we'll bring the heavy guns along with them. Absolutely. So that unit has now done its two actions, so its activation is over. And you take that order token and you put it face down to indicate that they have activated. With the Imperial level. Bing, right. bang, boom. Bing bang. Now it is your turn. Can I please shoot at those troopers? <laughs> Absolutely. I just really want to see that. In fact, you've got this face up order here, and you're able to do that. Let's just do it. Now, right now, these troopers are, uh, it, it, so you can pre-measure in this game. You can at any time check things out. So if you want to hand me a range ruler, your unit leader is definitely in range of the enemy squad. Now, uh, is he measuring to my squad or to my leader? Uh, he measures to the squad. So, but he was already in range. He's got range one to three. All right. So being this close isn't, isn't a huge problem. So this now, if you want to see where, I'm just going to move these trees for a hot second so we can do some measurement. Yeah. Um, if you want to see how cover is determined, it's determined, you measure from the center of the unit leader to each enemy unit in the squad. And if, there's, if that line is intersected by terrain, that model is in cover. So right now, if you shot this rebel squad, they would not have cover from your attacks. Because this guy's not in cover, this guy's not in cover, and this guy's not in cover. These two are, but more than half aren't. So. And this doesn't count against me, right? No, yeah, so that's the other thing. Uh, your unit leader does not count cover that he's in base contact with. Nice, yeah. So he's there, he's over yeah, the barricade, over it, right? so he's ignoring this. All right. If he was in the forest, it would be the same story. So you may want to 
you may want to move into cover before shooting. Yeah, let's In order to protect yourself. I absolutely want to so do that. So now you, you have the same speed. Your unit leader is here with the binoculars. This guy here? Yep. And so if, if you notice that it's like very easily within range, you can just pick it up and do it. All right. And so now, since my first action, I can immediately move, move everybody up in cohesion. Yes. Yep. With, with at, the, small at the end of your movement action, you can just put your guys into cohesion. All if right. you don't plan to move them again, you, it's best to just to do that. Just right. making sure that Smooth enough of them are behind there. the barricade and you're in business. Yeah, you want, I just you need want, three behind, right? Yep, yeah, you correct. Three in the barricades. Right. So let's just let's just stack in here. Looking nice and cinematic. Very good. Very good. This guy's about to open fire. This Fantastic. guy's looking a little bit. That gun is huge. Looking a little it bit is. awkward. Around and it rolls the a lot of dice. So now we're gonna get our first combat action in the game. Combat's pretty straightforward. Uh, each model in the unit has a weapon profile. So this is his hand to hand. And then this is the ranges. Okay. So if you're within range one to three, you can contribute one of these black dice to the pool. Makes sense. The range is determined from the unit leader. So you would measure from this guy with the binoculars. Looks like you're at just uh, at range two. So your weapons are all within range. And even if just one thing in that entire unit I can see, yep. I can shoot the whole thing. That's correct, yep. There are rules for if people are totally uh, invisible. The game uses true line of sight. So if these troopers were down behind this building, you could shoot the two visible ones, but you couldn't inflict casualties on the, on the ones below. So there's some nuance to it. But generally speaking, if you see them, they can be eliminated. And you know, even though these guys, e even if you were at range three from far away, once range has been established, you can get the rest of the, of the troops. Cool. She keeps it nice and simple, nice and straightforward. So you want to shoot these guys? I do. Good choice. <laughs> Good choice. So do. They are Dodge. the scourge of the galaxy. <laughs> so each of your rebel troopers rolls one white die, uh, one black die for the uh, for their weaponry. So they roll the the A280 blasters, and then you have a Z6 trooper who's this special guy, and he rolls six white dice. So he's just pumping out a jillion shots. Wow. So we don't have quite enough dice on hand. I can reroll For such heavy weaponry, but we'll do some rerolling. <laughs> so go ahead and roll those. And you are looking for uh, you were looking for hits or critical hits. Okay, so I'm ultimately gonna have four black dice and six white dice. That, that is correct. correct. Okay. Yep. So we can roll. So them. these front four, let's yep. do here, hope for probably like a miss. Okay, you got three hits or three hits. three hits so far, and then roll one more. And then this is the fourth one. All right, All right, so three so far, so three and then roll total. these twice. Yeah! Oh, a lot of shots, but not the most accurate dice. So this is a surge result. Surge results are the way we add variety to the game. There's a conversion chart in every unit card that tells you what you change these results into. Offense is on the top, defense is on the bottom. If it's blanked out, it means you turn them into blanks. I see. So, uh, Whiffy, the Z6 trooper there, carved a path, but luckily these riflemen are a little sharper. <laughs> so you've got three hits total. Now, he's in very heavy cover, which means that he is going to cancel two of those. So you can see how important cover is for defending. So it was just light tree cover, you would cancel, would cancel one. cancel one. And then the barricade yep. means he cancels two, okay? So once a, once a hit has been established, once the attackers rolled dice, any hits are canceled from dodge tokens or cover or what have you, then the defender rolls one die that matches their defense value for every hit that comes through. So if it had been three hits, I get three dice. Correct. Yep. And more dice okay. is bad because it's more opportunity to fail, essentially. <laughs> uh, right. So you'll roll your die. And you got a block. Block cancels a hit, so no casualties are applied. All right. But let's say that you'd roll the blank for the purposes of this example. training Absolutely. example. Your unit would suffer one wound for each hit that is not canceled out by a defense die. When you suffer wounds, you look at the unit's card, and you look at their wound threshold right there. That's one. That's one. So, blammo. One of my guys dies. One of your guys gone. dies. All so, right. again, right. everything is controlled by the by the defender. You get to choose which of your guys is eliminated, so you can keep that heavy cover. I'm going to... So, there you go. So, a stormtrooper has been slain, and the rebel troopers can rest <laughs> happy in the thrill of victory. <laughs> Except for this guy. Except for that guy. That guy needs to go fire. back to the academy. Yeah, he needs to go fire. back and get some training. All right, so now it's mine again. Yes, exactly. I want to activate this, this yeah, crew right here. Yeah, that's what I'm here. talking about. So, speeder uh, bikes are real special. Let me find the speeder bikes. Yeah, yep. here we are. They, they have, have three movements. They have a lot of cool special abilities. So I get the, so, the longer movement train here. Yep. 
So now they're naturally in cover because of their cover one ability. That's so they're always moving. in like cover. And then uh, cover's additive. So if they're being shot through trees, they would have heavy cover. So they're fast, which means they're often out in the, in the open, but they have some defensive keywords sort of baked into their uh, experience. The other cool thing about speeders is they have the speeder keyword. Uh, that means they have what's called a compulsory movement. When they activate, they have to perform a move at full speed, but it doesn't count against their actions. So they're always just blasting around on the battlefield. And the way you perform this move is you take the uh, speed three movement template and you insert it into the front notch of the unit leader's base, like so. And then you can pivot this tool up to 90 degrees. Okay. And uh, when it's a compulsory move, you have to go the full distance and place it at the end. Uh, if it was not a compulsory move, you could you could move up a tiny bit, you could just pivot sure. in place, all that kind of stuff. But this is just this is your compulsory move, so you'll have to go right. somewhere. Let's let's do make it a little interesting. Sure. And this is my leader? That's your leader, yep. Cool. So then this guy just gets to move. Yes, now, right now he can just be placed just like everything else. Yeah. Uh, anywhere in cohesion with the other guy. Just keeps, go there. keeps movement nice and simple. All right, so now I still have two actions. Yep. Now when you have a, a, a firing arc, which these units do, oh. you, can, you can kind of see it on their bases there. Uh, it's, a, it's a 90 degree cone in the front. So the only rule about placing, placing units with a firing arc is they just have to be facing the same direction as the leader. Okay. So, so you're good to go. All right, so now let me, let me now look at this stack. You have two actions cards. left. You can move again. It didn't even count. And how, how do I tell their uh, combat range here? Yeah, so they have a number of blasters. They got the EC-17 holdout blasters, one to two. which is one to two. And these are these are 360, they're the pistols. Uh, and then this is their the AX-20 blaster cannon. Now this is fixed front, so it can only be shot out of the front arc. All right. And well, it rolls a lot of dice. And I can check range at any time. You can you check said. range at any time. So you're certainly in range of these guys. Let's just see if we can reach. Yep, we got it. But um, sneaky, sneaky speeder bikes could theoret could potentially move again and get a shot on someone who isn't in cover. That's one of the bikes prime, over to over to one Luke. of the prime things that they can that they can do Let's, if you want to. And now, could I spend two actions attacking twice? So th that's a great question. Uh, the only action that you can do more than once is, is a move action, but there are enhancement actions that allow you to do better. So one of those actions is called aim, and that allows you to uh, to reroll two dice in your combat. How do I get this action? Uh, you just perform oh, it. Her. You take the aim action. So you have two actions remaining. So you could aim and then fire. Then you would get your dice rolls plus rerolls. Or you could dodge. Dodge is pretty helpful because it, it blocks a hit when you get shot. Sure. Pretty straightforward. Now, you're not in a ton of danger of being shot, so this is probably a better action for the, yeah, for well, the moment. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to be a little more exciting here. Oh, OK. Oh, speeder bikes. So yeah, I'm going to move around here. Let's get some movement going. I like your style, Mr. Bun. <laughs> hey, go for the throat. Absolutely. All right, and so when I'm measuring range from here in a minute, because mm -hmm. I. If I can't see Luke, I just want to make sure my arc is going to let me see. Uh... Yeah, so so here, we, we're in a true line of sight situation, so you get to do that fun minis gaming thing. I can definitely, like, uh, yeah, you, you got to yeah, lean down. Yeah. Uh, and oh, you he look, can see. Oh, absolutely. I mean, besides the fact that his head's the wrong direction, yeah. he can totally see Luke. <laughs> now, if he sees, I'm fine, right? I can yeah, just, so uh... both, both figures have to have line of sight to Luke. Ah. But you can place them wherever, so Actually, you're in pretty get, good shape. Let's get visual about this, shall we? <laughs> Absolutely. I want to get him. Oh, you're gonna get you're gonna get fancy here. Let's get real fancy. I like it. I just like I just like that you can do that without it being terribly fussy. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna go this way because he he has to be like looking the same way as his boss, right? <laughs> Absolutely. Just go yeah, right. You know business. how that one goes. You're in business. Right. It's nice and cinematic. Yeah. So now They're you just perform coming down the hill, right? <laughs> exactly. All right. So you've done your compulsory move action. But now I want to sling some dice. And now you want to sling some dice. A noble goal. I need a, a black, so a white, and a red. So yeah. you've got black, white, red. Is there another red die kicking There's around? There's some Here behind you, too, if you need and full of dice. How, how do I get that many dice again? So, OK. that's. Oh, I'm sorry. You don't get quite that many. I get one of each, <laughs> right? One, you get two of each. So, because each, mo each model uh, in the unit gets to use a weapon. All right. So, you establish range from the unit leader. You're going so you're down. Like, bing, bang, boom. Skywalker. Now, every model in the unit throws some dice. And I roll these all together. Correct. And I'm looking for not blank. Correct. I got a lot of blanks. That's all right. All right, but you got a couple hits. And a, I think that's a crit, right? The open face? Yep, that's a crit. Now, crits in this game, uh, 
they can't be canceled by cover, they can't be canceled by dodge tokens. Nice. They don't have any inherent effect cool. other than that. Nice. So Luke's been hit twice, which means he's got to roll two dice that matches defense value. Defense value can be found right there. You All can right. see he's got six wounds. Six wounds and three. So that's, that's something called courage. There's a whole suppression mechanic that we're not going to talk about for this demo, but we can certainly discuss cool. a little later on. But you don't have to worry about the yellow number for now. All right. Uh, just roll some dice and, and don't uh, don't get destroyed. So two hits. Yep. Two evade dice. All right. So now here, this is an interesting uh, thing to note because this is where sort of activation order and planning and all that kind of stuff and the strategy of the game really comes into play. Luke's got a red defense value, so that's pretty strong. Uh, essentially, that's a 50% chance of a block. Okay. He's also got an ability called Deflect, which says while defending, if you spend a dodge token, you gain Surge into block. So effectively, while he's got a dodge token that he can oh, spend, he can deflect and he can, set. Yes, oh, he can deflect. That would have been now, sick. had you had a dodge token, not only would you have blocked that hit, you'd have also caused a wound on the unit that shot you. Pretty but cool. But these guys caught Luke with his guard down momentarily, so he rolled essentially because he's got no surge conversion natively two blanks. Nice. Yep. Which means he's going to take two wounds, and that's going to be a third of the way and to knocking him out of the fight. How, and how, him. how many wounds does he have? He's got six. All right. 33% there. There you go. So a solid turn for those speeder bikes. Daring. And that's what is is that? Who dares wins? That's eight wounds, my friend. For, for the, so for you the took a compulsory man. move because you're a speeder bike. Then Correct. You took, your first action was move, second action was attack. Yeah. Exactly. Yep. Those guys can cruise. Now, if he'd wanted to, he could have moved again. The speeder bikes are insanely fast. It's one of my favorite units to play yeah. because they can be, as you can see, almost yes. anywhere. Like even on their next turn, it's like they could whip around here easily. And, and because they could go that far, they can catch units flat footed, they can catch units at angles that get them behind the barricades sure. and that kind of thing. So they're very they're very surgical, they're very good at getting in behind cover and taking those attacks of opportunity like that. So it is now back to you. And I must draw from the random stack oh, of fate. Oh man, this is fun. All right. All right, it's Commander Luke. It's time. I feel like I need to retaliate here. Yep. So, so what is Luke's move? How far can I move with Luke? Luke is speed two. Okay. So you can see he's got this. And I suspect those speeder bikes may have gotten a little too close for comfort <laughs> because Luke has a special ability called Charge. Now, that says after you perform a move action, you may perform a free melee attack It's going to be close. So you've got a move. Your second action can also be a move. But then you get a free attack. And then attack. if you're in base contact, you can hit him with a lightsaber. I think that sounds like fun. I feel Let's like lightsabers are going to hurt on that speeder bike. Right, so I've seen how this goes. This is accurate. Luke will activate. Ex excellent. And we will take our first action will be a move. And we are going to try to go. And now I noticed he also has jump, so I can go over yes. one level terrain. Yep, so for example, if he was here, uh, level one terrain is any terrain that is range one or shorter. Nice. So Luke can jump That's pretty quite high, a jump. as you can see. He's, wow. got some, he's got some force powers backing him up. All right, so there's the first move. Yep. And then the and it's, it's second good to like move. hover that over if it looks like it's going to be close, but that seems pretty oh, that's easily so in. in. It's crazy. Yep. So you can just put pick him up and put him right in base contact like that. Oh, there he is. Look let's, how good that looks. Let's oh, just make that a thing. So exciting. And then because he's a badass Jedi, he gets to roll a pretty incredible Whoa. close combat attack. I don't even want to know. Is it five? It's a number I can't count Six black to. dice. <laughs> Are they? Are those more or less powerful than the red ones? They're less. Excellent. I've got All right, a so here's, for you. We're good. We got three, <laughs> so I'll roll three and then I'll roll three more. Yep. So first. All right, Luke's having nothing. some. Wow. <laughs> Trying to turn yeah, that light yeah, better. On. So now Luke, if you look at his attack chart, you can see that he converts hits to crits. So you'll take this surge so and you'll convert it to a crit. So become criticals. Yep. Okay. So now you've got these three hits. Now speeder bikes have cover one. But cover does not apply in melee combat. Makes sense, makes so sense. So Luke's about to slice the front of that speeder bike and right so off. They, they have the white defense die. Yep. And I have um, three hits, so I have to roll three of these. Exactly. And we will see how close to death I get. Or only right. one of them can be canceled, right? Uh, so so these can't be canceled by cover or oh. by dodge token. So if these speeder bikes had a dodge token, but they can be blocked by defense dice as normal. But we'll, you'll have something that can take care of that in a minute. <laughs> I, I so, think I see it. So now you convert surges to in blocks. Block, straight up, wholesale. Got some bad news for you, Zach. <sighs> Luke's got a lightsaber. 
Yikes. Uh, Luke's here, lightsaber. Pierce two. Yep. While attacking, cancel up to two blocks. I'll be right back. <laughs> How convenient. <laughs> All right, and you did three. Yep, so if you take a look at your I speeder bike know. unit card. <laughs> I know, they have three health. <laughs> so there we go, cinematic, so cinematic one gun. moment right away. And then Luke, and Luke is activated. Has activated. Now he's pretty brave, he's standing in front of a lot of uh, firepower here. <laughs> All right. But, uh, you know, so now he's I, a Jedi. Now he's I can go, I, I assume? Safe, right? Yes. I'm going to take a random chance here. Yeah. On my random stack of one. Yeah. And activate it's my like other stormtroopers. Storm yeah. 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 All right. Uh, so two actions. I'm going to get in on this party now. Can I hop over this? What's the rule? Uh, yeah. That? So there are some advanced terrain rules which we're not playing with in terms of like difficult terrain or whatever. For our purposes, your movement is uninhibited for this game. So you can but go right in over. In like the a standard game, there would be some rules. It for is. This. Yeah. In a standard game, their their speed would be reduced by one if they're moving through difficult terrain. Yeah. They just sort of clamber over the barricade. So one move. I'm not going to make it to the barricade. You're doing a second move here? So that's yeah, your second, second action? Move. I think you got it. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're touching. Yeah, put that in there. How, how, how stringent are we on this, like, touching rule? Well, uh, you're in base contact, you're in base so contact. looks, looks base like contact. you're good. Let me, let me hover a little bit here. Let me get my uh, abacus <laughs> out. As with any minis game, it kind of depends on your opponent. All how right. rigorous you want to be about this stuff. It's Let's all very sure casual until in. the very end, when it gets really heated. That's right, that's right. <laughs> that's not touching. <laughs> So they have now activated. They've just charged ahead like a good stormtrooper does. And they're just ready to get shot at by these rebel troops. That's what they do. Absolutely. I hear that they're the best defense. <laughs> OK, so that's your activation. Yes, um, sir. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to activate here randomly. And I get a basic core unit. So it's going to be the rebel troopers. Very good. Correct? All right, so they're activating. Now, if I jump behind these trees, do I have a penalty for shooting out of them? So as long as your unit leader is in base contact with the terrain, you ignore the terrain. Correct. So if he takes position in those woods, he'll ignore them Which for shooting. Which is awesome. All right, so first action. Put him right in there. Oh, yeah, we can get everywhere we need to get. Now, can I be on this terrain? Certainly. Yeah. That's so, going to look too cool. Absolutely. Look at that. I, I'm going to have to. I mean, that's what minis games are all about, right? I know. It's that the is coolness. great. The cool factor is pretty important. I, is honestly, I, Nobody would assemble, paint, meticulously build this terrain if it didn't look this cool and it didn't yeah, feel this didn't good feel when this you've got awesome. a fully painted yeah. set out there. I love this just put your units around your commander thing. It makes it so much simpler. I, just, I, I, I hate exhaustively measuring for each little guy in a unit, and yeah. this, I think, helps the flow of the game so yeah, much. Yeah, well, and, and we're going back and forth here, so mm -hmm. it just makes it feel like you're actually playing the game the whole time. Yeah, I, I'm a big believer in alternate activations in having choices interlaced in player sure. turns, because then it keeps everybody engaged. You're not just waiting to take your models off or roll armor saves. All right, that was my first action was a move. My second action will be an attack. You're going to light them up? I'm going to light them up, and it's going to be the same it's... kind of thing. Absolutely. So I get one die each for my rebel trooper, so that's four dice. That's correct. And then I'm going to reroll these to get to six total. Yep. So oh, boy. So four dice total. We'll start with these three. Oh, Woo! head to head. We have a crit so far. I believe you convert. I convert defense. So this, to defense. This would go to a blank. And then we'll, we'll reroll roll that just to get another one. Solid so far. Two hits and a crit. Yep. And we'll see if this six, Z6 guy has any better better luck. <laughs> Not so far. <laughs> oh, there you got one in. So three right. hits and a crit total. All right. And so, so cover, you're in heavy cover. So that'll block two. So then I roll two dice. Two saves to make. Can All you right. leave the Z6 in just to represent that he might actually hit something? <laughs> and remove this one instead? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's, a, that's just for morale. That's for morale. I, Thank I you. agree. I All agree. Right, so I roll one block. All right, so you block one of the shots, and then you take a single wound. Which so, is a dead stormtrooper. That's a dead stormtrooper. Yeah, they don't but last long. But you know long. what? They're, they're, pretty, they're pretty tough when they're in heavy cover. They can, take a, they can take a beating. That's right. All right. That's my activation. That's it for the Rebels. All right, so then I have one activation left. Mm -hmm. I go with Vader, and he reads that when I activate him, I win. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. So Vader's a monster. Yeah, I see that. Uh, but he's slow. Just well, he's speed one. That's that's a. He doesn't he doesn't hustle. He, he does not calmly, hustle. He just calmly walks where he needs to go. All right, let me look at these stats really quick. Yeah, he's he's the but ultimate he, beat stick. I love that he can throw that lightsaber. Absolutely. That's insane. So the cool thing about Vader is he has three force power slots. So he has a ton of different options in terms of what he's yeah, kind of powers, focusing yeah. on for that particular battle, uh, and he also has a rule which lets him automatically refresh 
any force power at the start of his activation. So this one doesn't require this one doesn't require exhausting. But he could like and use refreshing. it, and then when he goes, he refreshes it. Correct. Luke's got a couple cool ones that we'll we'll dive into. All right. Uh, next round. Well, let's uh, range one. Is he? Can I see this thing? Absolutely. Let's just see how far away we are. <laughs> All right. How close is my my son? I can feel his presence. Can you, can you jump though? Vader cannot jump. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna move with Vader. Yep, uh, I think he did everything. Oh, okay, so they did uh, like a whole set. Yep, and then what was it? Was it uh, Bruins who was doing the? He's so slow. He's just lumbering around. Right, so Vader's first action is a move. Is a move, and then second action, I'm just gonna check again. He's not there yet, but I'll tell you what. When he gets there, it's pretty close, right? You better watch out. Uh, he's gonna go. Uh, up here. There we go. go Second action, no just worries. to move. Just lumbering around two moves later. All right, Vader, lumbering with Vader, his arm uh, forward. <laughs> <laughs> yep, Vader just hauls butt <laughs> forward. Now, you've moved twice. You may notice that Vader has the relentless special rule. Which says, after you perform a move action, you may perform a free attack action. Now, normally he wouldn't have anybody in range to dust with that lightsaber. Because, you know, you're far away, but... Through the forest comes a blaze of red. <laughs> I have saber throw. Choose one of your melee weapons. Perform a ranged attack with that weapon against an enemy unit at range one to two. Using half of that weapon's dice, round it up. This is treated as the attack action. So, range one to two. Got some red dice for you. Yeah, let's just make sure we got there. Red for six. So you're normally a six red attack. That's and right. you're halving it because yeah. you're throwing a lightsaber. Oh, man. Oh, I can't wanna... quite reach his son. I'll, su I'll surprise Luke next round. Save him for later. Turn him to All the right, side. So we're going to go <laughs> at the uh, heavy cover, guys. Mm -hmm. So here comes lightsaber. All right, you got a couple hits. Now he's only in light cover, he's just in some trees. So he's only gonna be able to cancel one of those. All right, so he'll so cancel one. one of those. So and you will roll- And this means a red die, right? That's, that's a white die. That's a white die. Yep. Okay. Uh, and the, I, I got some bad news for you too. He's Doesn't got matter pierce. what you he's roll. He's got pierce three. He's got pierce. So you can roll just to see what would have happened if you weren't having a lightsaber. So do you only have one success? He only two. rolled. He rolled two, and then light cover cancels one. Cancels one. And then one gets through. And it wouldn't and he, have mattered. Whiffed anyway, so one rebel trooper goes down. I think it's so obviously with, this with one. So with Pierce three, <laughs> the first like three hits are just. Four, four if bad. I roll three hits, they're just guaranteed. They'll yeah. all be guaranteed. Yep. And Pierce what, is incredibly, incredibly powerful. Because I see it on Vader. What's impact three? Okay, so impact is uh, how you deal with armor, ATSTs, ATRTs, big, heavy vehicles. Uh, we, one of the things that I wanted to do with this game was keep the sort of infantry vehicle uh, rules really straightforward. Because a lot of games, they'll try to be really simulationist about things, you'll roll on a lot of charts. Uh, I think there's a place for that kind of game, but we wanted this game to be really approachable. So the way that we dealt with armor is very similar to how cover works. When you're attacking an armored vehicle, armor cancels all hit results. So only your crit results will go through. Wow. So there's only one crit on every die. It really evens the playing field, you know? Like, it doesn't matter how many shots you're shooting, you can't penetrate the armor of an ATST very easily. So you need to bring heavy weapons. To be able to get through those big, big, beefy vehicles. Heavy weapons have impact. Impact, and a lot of the keywords in this game are stackable. The impact one, two, three, four, whatever. Sure. Uh, that means how many of your hits you can turn into crits. So if Vader is throwing his lightsaber at a vehicle, for example, he rolls this. All right, well, nice job, Dave. he doesn't convert, so this would go to a blank, but he's got impact three, so he could do this. So armor can't do anything about that. Yeah. And then pierce means it's gonna go right through to the vehicle. Excellent. So lightsabers are a great way to take out armored vehicles, as, as, you, as might you might imagine. As you might imagine, that's a pretty good uh, way. But your DLT-19's got impact one, uh, there's rocket launchers, there's, there's, there's definitely anti-armor weaponry out in the game. Cool. And of course, vehicles themselves will often have strong impact attacks to deal with enemy vehicles. But what this does is it keeps, keeps everything nice and contained. Uh, it all, you all roll the same dice. Uh, you never have to look up any, any crazy special rules for vehicles. It's all just a, a simple keyword system. Sure. But it does mean that you still have that, um, you know, that tactical interplay between what's good against armor, 
what forces should I bring to bear against these particular units? All that kind of classic wargaming strategy. Yeah, and then even if I bring a vehicle, forcing my opponent to send their units that can deal with the vehicle exactly. at the vehicle. Exactly, or maybe you can eliminate their anti-armor and then reign supreme with, with your ATST your ATST, that sort of thing. Your ATAT. Yeah. Absolutely. Should we see one of those? Shall we do the final activation <laughs> yeah, on my that's right. side? Yep. I'd like to see this vehicle go. So Absolutely. I know that that's happening. All right, so is it... This guy doesn't have to have that compulsory move, right? No, he doesn't this, have the speeder bike. Correct. So this is your ATRT. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, he's got some cool rules. He could climb, as you see him scale the cliffs yeah, in the like Clone Wars kind of episode. Stuff. Absolutely. Gonna, yeah. But you probably don't have to worry about that at the moment. It's got armor, which is going to protect you from those stormtroopers quite well. Not going to protect you from Vader super well. Uh, <laughs> and and you have a, a rifle on your soldier there. But you're also equipped with that under chin gun. That's your ATRT rotary blaster. I like that one. So that's a that's a pretty solid uh, range one to three weapon. Rolls a decent number of dice, and your ATRT converts surges into crits. So Ooh, slightly yeah. better at punching through uh, heavy cover than other weapons might be. All right. So you're easily within range of those stormtroopers. Uh, if you want to just lay down some covering fire, you could simply aim and fire. You could try to start moving up so you can get behind those barricades. Uh, I, the choice is yours, my let's man. Let's go ahead. Let's go ahead and take a move. All right. And what is the? Where do I find the move? So your far? speed two? is those red bars there, and they correspond to these movement tools. All right. So this is a two, yeah. Yep. It's got the two red bars there, or the nice. gray Makes bars, sense. I suppose, yeah. in plastic. Form. I imagine we would paint those. I know we're going. They're to. very paintable. <laughs> yes, it's, plastic is paintable. <laughs> As is the range rule. They got some cool grooves and stuff. Oh, that's cool. All right. Let's just move up here. Oh First boy. Action. All right. What a scene right there. Now, if he wants to shoot Vader, which he certainly could do, uh, you don't want to do that. You I, have to be within the front 90 degrees, which it looks like you are. You see, you see like a line on his yeah, face. Yeah, I, I want these troopers. Very good. Very let's good. just let's just try for them. So you got five black dice. Five black dice on that gun. Absolutely. So we'll start with three. There's a surge, and that does convert, according to my card. It does. That's to a, a hit crit. and a crit so far. Woo. All right. And, and you got three more coming in. I've got three more. So you have hit, hit and a crit. Hit, hit. So you've so got hit, hit, crit total, right? Or three, no, three hits. hits and a crit. Three hits so and a crit. Heavy cover will cancel two of the hits, which means two damage will get through from the attack. Just straight up. Straight up. Right, hit and roll. A crit. Yep. So these stormtroopers are going to rely on their armor. They don't oh. convert surges, so you're going to drop another stormtrooper. All right. Let's Beautiful. get rid of this guy. And that is one round of Star Wars Legion. All right. So. At this point, we would, we would take our tokens back. Yep, any unspent aim or dodge tokens are collected. All the order tokens are collected back up. And we go back to that command phase. So we'd be back to our hands. Now I've spent one of mine. Yep, so he knows you've spent your two and you don't have any other twos, but you've got a one and a three and a four. And the classic four. And the classic standing orders. That's right. Absolutely. So now, one some, some things to keep in mind, of course. Uh, Luke will be weaker before he has his defense token. Um, yeah, there's a there's a lot of there's a lot of strategy in, in how many things you want to give orders to, whether you want to try to go first, all that kind of fun stuff. All right, let's and just. You had the round counter for round one. Let's, let's do one more let's round. Do one, yeah. Yeah, we'll do one yeah, more yeah, round. I feel here. like I need one more round of this so you before have I let go there. of it. Uh, this is actually a tough choice. So like, what I'm looking at, right? Yeah. I can use ambush, which has one dot. Yep. But I only get to pick one unit that I know when I can activate it. That's true. I have the three, which lets me pick three of my units that I get in order Full to activate. control. Yeah. And then I have the four, which is just slow and also yeah. just biting It's time. your default. It's like, do you have any, you don't have anything better to play. Yeah, I mean, I, I really honestly feel like he's about to get lit up, so I kind of want to go. Yeah. It's not an unreasonable choice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's just let's just go for it. You know what I mean? Let's do All it. right. What do you got? I think. Yep. That's kind of what I suspected. So yes, there can be ties in this game. When ties two players. The I'm just kidding. <laughs> that's right. When two players play a card with the same priority, the player with the round counter, which passes back and forth every round, rolls a red die. The thing that I have. I <laughs> see so that. And so you need to roll a block to go first. Otherwise, Zach will go first. Uh, oh, the forces with Luke this I'll round. <laughs> What do you know? And I wasted my ambush. <laughs> I got out of the ambush. And All that's right. one of those things. It's like, if you know that you're going to be fought for these cards, sometimes it's better to, to give up that fast card and use it in a later round. Because it's risky to play a, a tied card like that. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to choose Luke, and then I'm going to shuffle my, uh, my oh, tokens. Oh, man. Very Luke's nice. getting out of, out of town. I feel that. 
But, um, now, but now you, knowing what Luke is going to do, probably activate first, that kind of thing, you can give your order to whomever you want. It's going to go Vader. Yep, solid. Because then if my guy dies, what happens if he's off the board and I draw his token? Uh, you just discard the token and draw a new one. All right, cool. Yep. All right, we ready? I'm so ready. All right, so I'm going to activate Luke. Yeah. So let's go ahead and I'm going to pull his stuff up here. Oh, you got some cool stuff, my friend. I, I figure we might have some cool stuff. All right, you got a couple of force powers. Now, to use these force powers, they are preceded by this free action icon. Yeah. That just means that you can use them during your perform action step, which is the bulk of your activation. Uh, and this little symbol on here with the like pointy arrow, that's exhaust. When you okay. exhaust a car, you turn it sideways. You can't use it until you perform a recover action. Recover on exhaust all your cards. Oh, okay. But until you've exhausted them, you're fresh, you're ready, you can do them as free actions in addition to your regular two actions. Makes which sense. Which is pretty wicked. So there's a number of things that Luke can do here. Luke has a like pretty this. amazing ability. He can actually pull enemy units yeah. around with the force. And that's an enemy trooper. So yep. that would have to be like stormtroopers, not these speeder bikes. Correct. He can't pull the bikes. Not uh, yet. And he can't pull like big vehicles yet. But uh, he can pull troopers around. Now to do, to use that, you got to be within range one. So you probably have to jump somewhere first to use that power, and then and then fight the speeder bike. But All it's right. a strong ability. So let's let's just start out. Let's do a move, and I can pre-measure, right? So I can just Absolutely. see where I'm going to be. Yep, and that's you're easily going to be in range there. So I just want to get right here engaged. All right, very good. So that's action number one. Now you've done a move action which means you get to make a free melee attack action because you're in base contact. I did make a charge. So pull that lightsaber out. Get All right. busy. Lightsaber's happening. What do we got? Yeah. How many dice? We've got uh, six, six. black dice. Six Woo. black dice. All no right. joke. First. First three. Crit. You got does two he, crits. Does he convert? Yes. Two he crits. Two crits. So yep. two crits and two, two hits. hits. Four defense dice. And he rolls the... Unless you roll very well indeed, that speeder bike is right. in trouble. All right, so I'm going to roll one, one more of these. All right. I like it's not going to make it. All right, you do get two blocks, but of course that lightsaber goes right through. That's Here's right. Here's for two. So two so of them four, are So four wounds and dead speeder bike. So that was my first action. That was your Luke. first action. That's correct. So before I forget, I'm just going to gain a dodge token. Now, does he get yep. a free attack every time he moves? No, because you can only perform uh, each action once, except for movement. All right, so next up, I have one action left. I've yep. taken a free dodge token with my force reflexes. Yep. So now I'm just going to get in some faces here. Absolutely. Let's jump in there. Let's, let's now, jump. If you, were, if you were feeling extra fancy, you, want a force push? you could pull them closer to you and then jump into them. Now, if I pulled one of them outside of cover, that might help my Rebel Troopers. They would not be in troopers. cover anymore for the Rebel Troopers. That's correct. That's no bueno. <laughs> and I no can bueno. do that at any time, basically. You can do that as a free action, so after you've done another action. Okay. So you've, you've resolved your move, your charge. Now we're in a window where you can, you can resolve these other things. So, so you can do force reflexes. Yeah. You resolve the dodge action, which is just to get a token. And then you're, once again, open a new action window so you can resolve another thing. Or I can take another action and then have another chance to use... That's correct. Force and that dodge force token break, allows him to use it. I'm going to do that right? just because I yep. think it's going to be very thematic. So very good. Let's come in here Yep. as my last action. I can yep. turn, turn your gun a little bit for me there. And then I will use my That's force That's about push. to get aced. Can I just pull this commander yeah. uh, right out here towards me? Yeah, so, so uh, technically... Uh, yeah, so it says even if it's engaged, so yeah, you can you can move this unit out. Speed one. I assume you want base? Yeah, yeah, right there. I just want that commander to yeah, come well, on you out touch and Yeah, and then you can like... So the other, the other rule about close combat, so actually you already sort of achieved this, but when you enter into close combat, everybody in the defending unit has to move into base to base to fight you. Oh, it's no matter time. where. So they can use, yeah, so, so you didn't actually need to use force push, so we can leave that untapped. It was very thematic, though. But it was super it was thematic. thematic. <laughs> And what that's going to allow this unit to do is it's going to be uh, nobody can shoot at units that are engaged because you're too likely to hit a friend if you're trying to shoot Luke. So these rebels can no longer shoot these stormtroopers, but consequentially, also nobody can shoot at Luke. Yeah. So it's sort of a way to protect yourself in the scrum that's of close combat. Into the so it's a zoomed in kind of, kind of a moment there. Yep. Yeah. All right. So that's a big part of what makes the Jedi characters so powerful. All right, Zach, over to you. We're going down, Skywalker. <laughs> I'm just going to go with Vader, because that seems yep. the most fun. Uh, 
Now you can probably. I'm trying to get to that forest, you know. Oh man, that that forest is about to get blown up. I don't think I'm gonna make it. I don't it. think you're gonna make it to the forest, but you're probably you could probably make it in range to throw a, a lightsaber at that uh, ATR team. You have a relentless too, don't you? Yes. So he would have. Yeah. One. Yeah, you're probably not quite gonna get there this turn. Let's just see. I trust Alex's eye on this. I've seen him judge <laughs> X-wing games before. The Mark One eyeball. The Mark One eyeball. Yeah, there's, there's no, there's no way. But I could move and lightsaber throw again. Absolutely. I think I'm just gonna move over here. Okay. Can you by chance make it into that cover? To touch uh, it? Oh, it's gonna be close. I believe that. I think you got it. I think you got it. So now, because you're touching the cover, it is ignored for attacking. Oh, that's really good. So you're in the trees with them now. They're really going to freak out at this point. Yeah, it's like there's a bear in these hills. <laughs> so because you're throwing your lightsaber, you only get three dice. Yeah. Oh. She's got three hits. And because you've got Pierce 3, that's just three dead rebels. Yeah, I'm going to convert to some three crits because of my Pierce. Oh. So that's impact. It only works when you're attacking a vehicle oh, yeah, that's with right, armor, that's right, that's right. but it is fancy, so let's just leave it. Yeah, let's stand. just let it stand. There's right. no game effect whatsoever. Hand me those three white dice just so that we uh, do you this. See what would have happened? Okay, so like, <laughs> so Vader is basically cancels up to three results. Yeah, yep. piercing three. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. No. Nope. For the for the sake of the game, let's oh. see what would have happened. <laughs> Lightsabers are legit. Luckily, the lightsaber <laughs> goes right through that armor. Every one of them thought they were getting away, though. I want I want you to know that. <laughs> So you right. lose three guys. The only rule about casualties is you can't lose the leader until the very last casualty. All right, well, that makes it easy. So these, he stands alone. These woods are Defiant. now haunted. Defiant. Oh, man, and we're both on random at this point. Yes. Honestly, this is a terrifying scene. Can you imagine? Yeah, it's awesome. Everybody around you disappears. And then there's... I mean, you're in the forest and you just hear the breath. <laughs> yeah, I don't like that. I don't like that at all. All right, well, uh, your turn for random. All right, I got a rando here. Oh, we got the, the bike. That's the only thing I didn't want you to get. Well, so, I I don't know. Can I even, should I even go after Vader or should I keep I working on seeing. these troopers? Vader's right. going to be a tough nut to crack, but uh, he's got eight wounds. If you just want immediate carnage, uh, you could move up to that barricade, denying them cover, and just blast them. What if I chose the aim action? What does that do? So aim lets you reroll two dice. Okay. So my choice is basically I can take away two of these defense yep. like automatically, or I could reroll two of my dice. Obviously, yeah. it's better to go up into the cover. Yeah, yeah. Denying cover in this situation is a better choice. Yeah, because that's two auto cancels, right? Yep. All right, so let's go ahead and do that. So I believe so. You would insert to the front arc, and you would move along the template, keeping your uh, keeping your front arc aligned with the template, exactly. And then you can move. Yep, exactly. And then boom. That's gonna hurt. That barricade's not gonna protect them when you're that close. <laughs> Literally, man, <laughs> Ter terrifying to think about. Um, all right, so now we have six, uh, five die? Uh, yeah, five, five, five black, black dice. dice for the rotary cannon. And no evades this time. Zach, there's three, three hits. hits. There'll be no one to save you this time. Four Two more. Five four hits. hits and a crit. And I roll reds, which I only have three of, so I roll yep. three and then three hope, and one. Hope your armor was uh, built to spec. You got two so far. And I'm going to roll so one more. One. Two, and then one more, because it was five total. Okay, so three, I'll reroll re that. Reroll. <laughs> three. All right, so you lose two stormtroopers. So I had uh, four hits see. and a crit, you rolled three dodge. So Jeez. that means two are gone. Yep, so that leaves just, just your leader standing alone. I don't All like the odds myself. of this uh, ATRT. I mean, I think next round it gets chopped to pieces yeah, by the yeah. Dark Lord. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. since we're only playing two rounds, that was an excellent strategy. That was an excellent, excellent <laughs> roll here. All right, so I draw the token. It's from the speeders, which I don't have yep, anymore. They are, so that goes they're away. not on the board, so you have no matching units, so you discard that. So then I go here. It's troopers. Uh, and now these guys can't be shot by them once while Correct. Luke's in here, right? That's Correct. good for me. So now you, the only way to leave an engagement, which is when troopers are locked in combat like that, is to spend your full activation just doing a speed one move to yeah, withdraw. That's not, not going to help you. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to shoot Luke. All right. So you can't. You're too close for for guns. I just so punch you got to use your fists. Ah, uh, yes, the black dice. So you got black dice here, but you can you can aim. So you can aim so for I'll rerolls. Aim. Yep. And so I get three dice or four dice. Yep. And then I get a reroll two. Correct. So here we go. Here, here we go, Maximus. Uh, that's pretty good. Not bad. I'll roll my fourth more. die. Yep. 
Uh, you didn't even need that aim token. All right. Stormtrooper is not a fight. That, three hits in the crit. That brings up a question, though. Yes. If I don't use the aim token, what happens to it? It stays. For uh, until I use it. Uh, it. They're removed at the end of the round. Sad. So it doesn't usually matter. All right. Uh, so three hits in a crit. All right, Alex, I have a question. Yes. It says, while defending, if you spend a dodge token, you gain surge into blocks. And then, yes. if it's range, you can do damage back. Yes. When do I have to make that decision? Ah, that's a great question. So this this goes into uh, the attack timing chart, which yes. helps me uh, pull out my, uh, my <laughs> rule book here. Pull out the rules. Uh, uh, when you're resolving a, uh, a, a ranged attack, of course, you must proceed through the it wouldn't be a miniature requisite game uh, attack sequence. Actually, it's pretty straightforward. Basically, you declare your defender, you make a pool based on what weapons are in the pool. You roll your dice, then you get to the applied dodge and cover step. This okay. is when the defender uh, gets to choose to spend dodge tokens. So here, here we are. I imagine you want to spend that token. Yeah, makes sense. So Luke's going to spend the token. And now this is not a range hit. attack, though. So. Right. He's got a two-part ability, right? Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So he can spend his dodge token to improve his defenses. And then if, if it's, it's a ranged, ranged attack, he can bounce blasters that back. That makes sense. You can't yeah. bounce my fist back. Right, in. exactly. Not unless he uses the force to make yeah. your stuff hit themselves. <laughs> Which just seems childish. I don't think Luke would uh, necessarily I be on board know. for Tatooine that. Tatooine Luke might. He might. He might. Uh, all right. So <laughs> you cancel one automatically. Now I'm down to two hits and a crit. Yep. So now you roll your three red defense dice. Oh, and, and so, defense dice. Oh, uh, yeah. So Luke's got to defend himself against these Stormtrooper punks. Now it's a good thing he spent that dodge token because this is going to turn on that surge to protect him from harm. No. So timing is really important with these Jedi characters. Yeah. yeah, yeah. As you can see. And they're pretty hard to take down. Yeah. So you got a really good you got a really good early snipe on him while his defenses were down, but you can see that if he's got his dodge tokens up, he's in really good shape. Totally. Now that card that he just used, uh, right here, Luke. Oh, force yeah. reflexes. You can see that it exhausts, so it doesn't come back until he spends a full action to refresh it. Okay, very. So cool. in a longer game, there's, there's opportunities to try to punch through those Jedi defenses when they're when, when they're not more, up. And you have, you have more guys, maybe, on yeah. the board. Yeah. Yeah. This is this is basically the contents of a core set. Cool. So this is sort of your your intro, uh, intro to the game. All right. So you just went with your stormtroopers. That's it, right? For you. That's it. I have not, that guy left, technically. Not terribly exciting. That's true. Um, we'll go here. So these guys can't attack here. They cannot. Can they just kind of run up and get in the scrum though? They might be able to. Oh man, uh, that'd be a wild party. So, <laughs> actually, hold on. Let's 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 send them over here to the Dark Lord, sure. shall we? Yeah, you can probably get some shots on Vader. So. All right, and starting with the commander here, we're just gonna ignore some terrain. Yeah, yep. I really do love just moving the commander. It helps so much. And I'm just gonna go. A now second you can maybe time. shoot right there. You could. I'm just gonna get him in position. Fair enough. Let's do that, and let's uh, right just gather around tree. the maple. Absolutely. Here. Get some cover. Protect yourself. Nobody really wants to approach, but we're gonna do it anyway. All right. All right. So that was my uh, turn with those so then guys. I'll draw my last token. All right. Go with old commander. Heck yeah. Commandy. <laughs> really a survivor, staring he's right just, down he's the He's gonna there. shoot at the big guy for no particular reason. All right, he's got one white, white guy, dot. and I need a crit. So I'm gonna, take, crit. I'm gonna take the um, aim. Absolutely. Aim. Yep. And I have a one in eight chance here. <laughs> yep. Twice. So that's like a 25 percentish chance. Yeah, you know. It's a I'm, miss. Gonna, I'm gonna re-roll. Now we're down <laughs> to one in eight. Good luck. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Basically a crit. Like a stormtrooper. He's a little bit scared, maybe. Uh, and then nothing is so precise. Finally, I've got this. Oh, you got that one guy. But I've got the one guy here. <laughs> oh no. Um. Well, let's let's go here. I want to aim and shoot there. All right. Sounds good. Roll one black die. Is this my aim token? Is that, yep. That my uh, aim that's token? your aim token. I think there's one over here. There you are, sir. And you're shooting at the stormtrooper. Yes. Now I need a crit so that his cover doesn't evade. That's okay. correct. Give me that. Back give me that, that black die right here. All right. So again, Rebel Trooper, one black die. Mm -hmm. I will get to re-roll it. Yep. So cover would of course block that. Ah. And it bounces harmlessly off the barricade, thus ending today's second turn. Star Wars Legion demo. Alex, thank you so you're, much. You're very welcome. I'm glad Alex, you guys thank you so got much to. for demoing this. I'm very excited to check it out. Absolutely. Star Wars Legion. So anything else we should know about this game before we uh, get out of here? Yeah, I just want to show you a couple of uh, some of the more flavorful elements that I think really 
uh, enhance the experience once you get to a, a bigger size game, like the, the full game? Because what we basically played was a enhanced learning game. Yeah. Played the learning scenario with a couple extra upgrade cards just to show you some of the, the works. But one of the coolest couple of things in this game is actually not uh, easy to display in demo form. Uh, one of those things is that each commander in the game has their own unique super special oh, command cards, wow. which is really where you get a lot of the flavor of these commanders. Oh, man, and they Darth work Vader just like other command cards, but they're generally a little more limited. As you can see, Darth Vader's cards, two of them have to give tokens to Vader. One of them can only give tokens to troopers, whereas the more generic cards are more flexible, but they have powerful effects. Wow. Uh, you know, new ways to motivate them. You get a free move or attack action at the, at the expense of, uh, of, a, of a wound, one, of your, yeah. one of your troopers. I love that. Uh, and implacable. Vader gets a whole other activation in a turn. Uh, you it's know, or, or another, at least another this action. This is so cool, yeah. yeah uh, then, Son of Skywalker can go completely ham with his melee attacks. One additional attack, he can yeah. give out. He can give out uh, dodge tokens to protect his troops. He can remove suppression, which is a a more advanced mechanic that keeps units pinned down and maybe makes them panic. That's sort of where morale comes in and all that kind so of stuff. So tell me this, Alex. This is the last thing that I want to know. How yeah. do you build an army for this game? That's a great question. So uh, the standard, like, 800-point size, 6x3 battlefield is uh, you, you have 800 points to spend. So um, I want to say this is about half of an army. Uh, a full-size game, you're maybe going to have closer to 10 units. Um, and there are there are ranks involved. So I'm you looking have at that. Luke take, is 160. It looks like yep, right. Luke's 160. So force powers cost a little bit. He usually comes in about a 180, 180 to 200 range. And when you're building your army, there are uh, there are army building rules. And you can see that you've got commander, core, special forces, support, and heavy. Okay. And so there's a bit of a rigorous, a slightly rigorous construction thing. So you have to take three core units which in the core set is Rebel Troopers or Stormtroopers. They're the base of your army. Uh, and then, once you've done that, you can take up to three Special Forces units. None of those were on display, but those are things like Scout Troopers, nice. the cool elite commando type units. Support, that's your, your speeder bikes or your ATRTs. And then Heavy, that's your snow speeders, your ATSTs, that kind of fun stuff. Imp and then, of course, your commander is your commander. You can take up to, to two of those. You can take up to two commanders. Yeah, and two commanders, two commanders is pretty sweet. <laughs> Because that means your command hand is going to have a mix, cards, a mix of cards, and your opponent may not know what you have. You're limited to seven cards, uh, two of each pip plus yeah. standing orders. Okay. But you can pick any card you want. From either so if commander. you have like Luke and Leia, they don't know whether you've got Son of Skywalker or one of Leia's cards or whatever. So there's this guessing game when you're in your command phase. What do they have? Yeah. What can they do? Even if you know the game, you're not necessarily going to know what they're sure, holding. Sure, what they've got. And so another question for me, yeah. in, if you can give a quick taste, mm -hmm. you, you know, you mentioned earlier, we were just kind of killing things. Yes. Uh, but it's going to be a very objective-based game. Yes. So do you have like an example of one of your favorite objectives in the game? Well, Zach, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm glad I did too, apparently. So this is the other thing that I wanted to talk about. And I'll try to keep this quick because I know we got a lot of excited people who want to get yeah. their hands on this. But this is one of the coolest things about this game, I think because it really changes up every game and it makes every game very, very unique. So when you're playing a full game of Legion, there's, there's a, a, a phase where you establish the battlefield. And this is a pretty cool phase. The player who has the fewest points in their army, so you brought, two, you brought 790, Steven brought 783 83 or whatever, he's gonna go and he's gonna decide whether he wants to be the red player or the blue player. Now, he's, let's say he chooses to be the blue player. Blue player gets to des decide what side of the battlefield he's on. So let's say, let's say you're the blue player. You decide you're going to pick this side. We got these things called battle cards. The art on this is phenomenal. It's really good. The graphic design man, Evan, hit it out of the park. So I'm good. so excited They're about so this. Good. So, good. so you deal three of these from each category. I'll just hold them. Yeah. <laughs> so you got three of these. You got three of these. Oh, and you I got three of these. Totally understand. And then you take turns eliminating options until you until you have what you're going to play. So out so of these nine, I can eliminate one. Yeah. So you're the blue player. You you chose the side first. That means you also eliminate things first. You're like, I don't want long march. I don't want these to be our deployment zones. Yeah. So you're going to turn this face down. Then we're playing with these with the top three. So Steven's like, I don't want rapid reinforcements. Yep, so he's going to turn that face down. Then you're going to be like, I don't like breakthrough. And Steven's going to be like, disarray, that's terrible. I only brought one wow. commander. We're going to do major offensive. 
So then what you're left with is these three cards. The Let's rest of them are scenario, right? exactly. The rest of them are discarded. And so then you've got a deployment zone that's totally unique to the game. You've got a, a, a condition card. So in this game, you know, not a good game for snipers or long range artillery because it's going to be two rounds of fog or dust or whatever you know evocative Star Wars awesome. thing is going on. That's just uh, that's really awesome. And then so the mission lists. is how you win. Yeah, and this so. is recover the supplies. There are five objective tokens out on the board that everyone's racing to complete. Maybe they're kyber crystals. Maybe they're vital, you know, T7 ion blasters that the rebellion wants to liberate from imperial hands. Whatever sort of narrative spin you want to put on that, that's a vital piece of technology or equipment or mystical artifact that both sides are trying to recover. Sure. And this means that every single game you're never going to be quite sure how it's going to play. So you have to build an army that's flexible, that's going to be able to adapt to its environment, and well, it's going to be able to do a lot of different things well. Even this win condition with varying setups, mm -hmm. with varying like limited visibility versus the other you know things, completely changes the one scenario. Yes. But then this, these two as well are very different for each of the scenarios, right? So yes. Pretty cool, man. And, of and course, how, how many of these are there? So there's 12 in the core set. There's four, each each, four each? there's four in each category. So there's four different deployments. We kept these early ones pretty simple. Sure. Although this one can really mess with your battle plans. Yeah, because you're spread out. As you out. can see, yeah, this is disarray. Yeah, your, your and, you're, and your commander up. is what's giving you the activation. But exactly. if you have two, that's helpful. If you brought two, it's often good to push for disarray. Yeah. Because I I, had, I played a game with uh, with Luke Eddy, who's been developing on this uh, the other day. And he, he pushed it to disarray because I only brought Vader. And so I had Vader off on like, one side of the board. All my other troopers were kind of like, what do we do? To, yeah, they were not able to activate in the order that I wanted them to, and he ended up winning that game, in part because he was able to determine this deployment. That's so, very cool. So the, the army that you have, the army that you face, all of these tactical decisions start to happen really early on, even in setup, which is a lot of fun. There's a, there's a bunch of different condition cards, so sure. clear has no effect. Hostile environment suppresses you if you're out in the open, so you have to kind of flip from terrain to terrain. Rapid reinforcements lets you airdrop troops into the fight in That's subsequent turns. Cool. And then there's four different objectives. You've got break through to the enemy's deployment zone, occupy a key position, recover supplies, there's an intercept of transmissions. So we're trying to do these sort of broad and, and adaptable but very flavorful uh, condition cards. And of course, as the game goes on, we'll, we'll do more expand of these this pool, right? and expand this pool like we've done with our with our Mata and that kind of thing. For, very cool. So very this cool. is one of the things that I think is the most fun about sitting down to play this game. Because you never know what you're going to get. Exactly. You never really know what you're going to get. All right. Thank you so much, Alex. Thank you, man. Thank you all so much for watching. Thanks, we have Alex. more coming from Always Paragon a pleasure, and man. for Cheers. Legion. Stay tuned. And until next time, keep playing. Hey, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. You can find a ton more videos just like this one on the channel. Also check out Covenant subscriptions. You sign up for your favorite games, we automatically send you new releases as they come out. You'll never have to worry about keeping up with your favorite games again. Thanks again for watching, and until next time, keep playing.